And finally tonight, from the going down in a poof of smoke file, the host of the Family Research Council's Washington Watch did a commendable job of physically restraining his urge to label his caller a fucking nut last week when a listener suggested that perhaps the Pentagon is using weaponized aphrodisiacs to secretly turn Americans gay. <laughs> the caller explained that the Pentagon already had gay bombs, which he verified by Googling ben, pen, uh which he verified by Googling Pentagon gay bomb and wondered if perhaps the U.S. government was secretly using such weapons against its own people. (laughs) Well, Google seems pretty convinced. When I typed Pentagon, the third suggestion was Pentagon gay bomb. That was what they were very quickly. I mean, maybe they just knew that was what I wanted to search for, but then it should have been the first suggestion. So it's usually suspicious. whatever I type, gay bomb comes in after. <laughs> now, I have to admit, when we first saw the, the, this particular headline, I was sure that we were just going to be making fun of the guy. But I looked, you know, I took his advice. I Googled it as well. It is on the Internet, so it must be true. So to help our listeners cope with the pending gay ordinance attacks, we've invited a few military savvy friends to give us some advice. Yes, we did. Bill and Susie host the Barroom Atheist Podcasts, and they are both veterans of both the military and losing to me in fantasy championship games. Bill, Susie, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Yeah, appreciate that. You didn't assume that it was going to take long for me to bring up the fantasy championship thing, did you? Yeah, now, well, it kind of relates. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely going to be some butt hurt in both instances. So uh, now, first of all, give us sort of a, what, what are your military credentials? Which, which branch did you guys serve in? We were both Air Force, and uh, I'm retired and Air Force. And I served almost five years. Oh, right on, right on. Awesome, awesome. Well, I thank you for your service, but if I'm thanking you, that probably just diminishes it when <laughs> other people do it. Now, I have to ask, um, because your service, if, if I'm reading this correctly, seems to overlap with the development of these gay bombs. So when you were in the military, did you ask and were you told about gay bombs? <laughs> and, and sub-question, if you did have to ask, how were you able to afford it? <laughs> your, the gay bomb that you bought. Actually, I predate Don't Ask, Don't Tell. <laughs> Do you really? Uh, yeah, that was Clinton. I came in under the first George Bush, so they asked. They made you fucking tell. <laughs> oh, right. Now, you were not an atheist at that time, right, because atheists weren't real Americans under the first George Bush. That's right. correct. Yeah, that's I was true. a closeted atheist who are kind of real Americans. I see. And you weren't in – I mean, they don't They don't still have Fox. Well, you were in the Air Force. They don't have Fox in the Air Force for sure. So well, I guess the – Unless you're talking stays about true. a strip club down the road, then no. <laughs> No, that's the foxhole. That's a completely different thing. Um, now, uh, of course, we are kind of concerned about this whole gay bomb thing. Did they have the gay bombs back when you guys were, were in the Air Force? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, so it's, it's a real thing. Okay. Now, how do those differ from, from regular ordinance? Well, see, if they're, say, if they release a nerve agent on you, everybody yells, gas, 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 it gets in the hole. Now, if it's a gay bomb, they yell ass, ass, ass. I see. Different communication system makes it. Right. So it's a different warning system. And different detection, too. With a nerve agent, you use like a chemical litmus paper. Mm -hmm. With uh, the gay bomb, they issued us a picture of the first lady, Barbara Bush at the time. (laughs) (laughs) And if she started to look hot, then you're... (laughs) you're, (laughs) Barbara Bush naked on a cold day. Your chip right, meter was starting to swing toward dude. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, <laughs> not everybody has a, a picture of Barbara Bush um, that they can easily access. So, of course, we do have a national gay bomb defense warning system. It's kind of like the regular bomb raid siren, but it has a lisp. So tell us, what should we do in the event of a gay air raid? Okay, Great we, question. We were trained on this. And actually, if you are ever confronted with, with a uh, Charlie Oscar, Charlie Kilo... <laughs> We had an acronym for it. <laughs> we had the acronym for it. It's it's the acronym is Dick. D I C. First, it's distraction. Try show tunes, okay? Because if you can get a sing along going, you know, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plane. That may save you a little butt hurt. Okay. However, Good however, they did caution us: nothing from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, <laughs> under any circumstance. Okay. No time work. Number two, no the I. The I is interdiction. Now we had uh-huh. a we had a med kit with the, what they call quick clot in there, and you pour that on an open wound that'll cauterize it and seal it. What you got to do? <laughs> I think I know where we're going. <laughs> right up the Alpha Hotel. <laughs> That's exactly where you're go. What that'll do is that'll seal everything up. Okay, it makes like an artificial hymen. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what Alpha Hotel. Oh, okay. It's a Heine <laughs> Hyman. It's a Heine Hyman. <laughs> I, I, see, I see. That brings us to C, I do believe. If, that, if all else fails, clench. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to ride it out at that point. Just don't do it. <laughs> You just go with it. It's like a skid. I gotcha. That is Gay Bomb Survival 101 for your listeners. <laughs> I, I feel prepared now. I Air Force prepared. style. <laughs> All right, so, so what you're saying is whatever you do, don't get under the desk. No, that's a bad place to be. <laughs> At least All not right. with your ass hanging out. <laughs> All right, now let's let's switch a little from the defense to the offense because I'm kind of curious how these things work. Do, when you load them into to a cannon, is there like a a different part of the cannon you have to put? Does it have like a separate orifice for the gay bombs, or does it just go in the regular? Well, there shoot? are numerous deployment systems, Noah. Um, we had the Santorum Sidewinder missile, <laughs> of course, and of course the Tom Cruise missile. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> it was really a Top Gun. I, I gotta say, I gotta say, that's I believe two for two that you guys have been on the show, and that uh, Tom Cruise being gay has come up. So, <laughs> so when it, when it comes to the gay Air Force, can a gay bomb fly with another gay bomb, or do they have to take separate planes? Is that a, is, I mean, blood blood's upon them either way, right? How, how does how does it work? Do they decide? Well, biblically, it's one gay bomb, one conventional bomb. You don't uh-huh. have two K bombs. All right, that makes sense. I think that's in um, Air Forkius, <laughs> chapter seven. Air Forkius. We haven't we haven't gotten to that one yet. That must be New Testament. Now, it it it, it really to me it kind of lays bare the nefarious motives that were behind the push to allow gays in the military. I thought that was progressive, but now I see that if if one of these should accidentally go off, you could lose an entire elite squadron if you didn't change that policy. Well, I was at the testing of these things when they first started testing these gay bombs. It's funny because they only used women to test them on, Mm -hmm. and all the senior officers needed private viewing areas. I don't know why. (laughs) Awesome. Now, okay, so I do want to switch this to an atypically serious note here. Why do you guys think that gay rights has become such like the front line for the theocrats. It seems like they're putting all their chips on the let's keep the gays from getting getting rights uh, uh, portion of the field, whatever that is. And, and I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts on that. Like, why has it become such a big deal? Uh, or why has so much of the, the Christian oh, focus gone yeah. that direction now? Because they've lost everywhere else. They can't force you to pray in schools anymore. They can't they, they, they can't silence the rest of us and the gays are that whenever you're trying to get a movement going and get people angry you need a villain the nazis mm-hmm. had the jews and i'm not drawing this as a direct correlation so let's not say i'm brian fisher <laughs> yeah, quite gone i'm not brian fishering yeah um but you need a villain that's their villain is, is the gay community, the homosexual agenda. Ooh, the gays are going to get you. The gays are mm-hmm. after your kids. And it's frankly bullshit, and it was bullshit when I was in the military. And one of my happiest days was when they did away with all that uh, don't ask, don't, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell bull, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was retired by them, but I went out and celebrated. Glad to hear. That That was such a half-ass measure in the first place, and it's amazing that that represented at least something of a step forward. Right. Now, it almost seems to me like at this point you can sort of see the transition because they they seem to be realizing that they're losing mostly with the demonization of gays, that it's now becoming the transgender that they're trying to demonize. Honestly, I don't think these bastards see the difference. I really right. don't. I think they just lump them all. Well, they're gay too. Right, right. right. I, I don't think... It, They're not sensitive to the, well, there's a difference to somebody who actually wants to change gender to a guy that wants to have sex with guys. That's an entirely different thing. But, you know, through the lens of bigotry, it's like Mexicans and black people, if you're in the KKK, they're the same thing. Right. And and I think that's the focus. Yeah. uh, Trans people give them a new target, maybe. But, yeah, and I think that maybe just more effective scaremongering, at least at the moment, for them, because maybe people understand the homosexual community more than the trans community at this point. Well, and they're now, ra- they're cranking up the vitriol because they're losing. I mean, we've got gay marriage in the majority of states now, and I think pretty soon it's going to be 50. I, I certainly hope you're right. I certainly hope that the Supreme Court's on the right side of this one this time around. It, it, it's It's so bad, in fact, that as I was reading this story, it struck me that 
that this whole concept of a gay bomb is actually – that would be a step forward in Christian attitudes <laughs> toward gays because at least then they would be admitting it's not a choice. <laughs> You know, like, this is actually better than their normal bigotry. Well, they were standing on, like, the North Pole of bigotry. Right. Gay bomb <laughs> might have been the dumbest way south of all their infinite choices, but they did head south. That's true. It's a baby step. What would that even look like? Like <laughs> <laughs> a gay bomb. Hello, I've got a feeling that love is here to stay. Rainbow sprinkles coming. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, delicious. Bill, Susie, thank you so much for lending us your expertise and telling us, uh, you know, exactly what will happen with uh, this gay bomb that's probably going to happen. So before we close things out, by any chance, could you spare another half minute or so to discuss the exact details of what we can expect from World War Gay, which is about to happen? Yeah, we're in. Excellent. We'll need 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Ideas for the militant homosexual army. Go. All right. Well, I'm thinking we can start by giving all new meaning to drill sergeant at GASIC training. <laughs> How about drop your socks and grab some cocks? It's a recruitment slogan. I, I was thinking more like a ant say I want you more. But, yeah, recruitment slogans. I like them. How about cock and all? Oh, of course. <laughs> Obviously. All right, uh, I'm not familiar with that, those, but I uh, wish I was. For, for those people who know a couple of details about World War II history, what about the, uh, the Enola Gay Airmen <laughs> dropping little boys into Japan and turning the population gay since 1945? Wow. We know how to abomination. <laughs> Congratulations. That was offensive to for a Hiroshima apologize joke. Apologize to several groups. <laughs> Just kidding. That's awesome. <laughs> Of course, we you know we have to have some some weapon reform, and, and I understand that if you carry a a gay K forty seven and a twenty two, that adds up to sixty nine. So they'll probably <laughs> like that. Nice. <laughs> well, I, I think you know some of the things in the military you know, kind of give you an idea that they've already been used. Like, do you know a Marine Corps Master Sergeant is actually called Top? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? And they call the bathroom the head. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So you could meet Top in the head. <laughs> And something with private pile, and I don't know. There's something, yeah. <laughs> what about uh, what about the Queen Beret Commandos? Oh, of course. Rainbow Coalition forces reach around front after flanking from behind loosens resistance. Is what the headline might quite be. quite complex there. <laughs> and of course, you know, if you're gonna have a gay army, they're gonna have plenty of seamen. So maybe the Gravy Navy. <laughs> their slogan could be "You spunk my battleship." <laughs> and they have, if they have to attack a female-dominated area, they could do some carpet munch bombing. Well played. Of course. <laughs> Speaking of which, how about uh, Orange is the New Blackwater? The <laughs> lesbian ex-con mercenaries for hire. Of course, yeah. Formerly owned by Prince. They can't manage Eric a pincher Prince. movement, but they're great at the scissor. Um, <laughs> well, well, I was just thinking in general that World War Gay is going to have some fun headlines. You know, uh, NATO double teams up with Fudge Pact. New campaign, deeply impactful. Like, there'll be some fun, some fun headlines along the way. If or maybe you know. U.S. queer troopers penetrate deep behind enemy lines. <laughs> Brigade's epidemic worsens as Pentagon struggles to defend discharge of the White Brigade. <laughs> See, now, I was actually originally going to do something with, the, uh, with a klitzkrieg, oh. but I decided instead that that's just going to be my new term for female genital mutilation. That's... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you need a new term for that? You can't just <laughs> the Klitschkrieg. I think that's just a little snappier. <laughs> yes. What about the Lower Manhattan Project? Village people achieve larger ass blast radius than anticipated. <laughs> and as usual, ICBM. I'd re <laughs> wow. So this is going to take a while. If you have to catch up with that joke, there was a lot to process there. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Now we go. You were right. It took a minute. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, of course, shit at the light, yeah. if you'd like to hear more Slow from Bill burn. and Susie, be sure to check out Barroom Atheist, which you'll find linked on the show notes for this episode, or come see them in person at ReasonCon in Hickory, North Carolina, the weekend after next, like we'll be doing. You guys excited yet? We're excited. Yeah, I'm it's so going to be excited. so fun. I'm actually looking forward to meeting Tom and Cecil in person, despite all the things that they've said to suggest that I shouldn't be looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know the, those those two other well, those guys, guys that yeah. I told you were were had such bad language you can't listen to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm glad to share that distinction with them. Again, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for Appreciate having us, it, Noah. 
And when we come back, Wyatt and Love from Atheist Avengers will be here to try to get you as fired up about ReasonCon as the rest of us.